everybody. It's a uh, another week of technical difficulty with amazing uh, United States internet. Uh, other countries over the all over the world have uh, good internet, better infrastructure. Not everywhere, but there's a lot. But the United States just one big cluster F of FiOS or Comcast, and they all suck. Um, yeah, I'm not going to elaborate. I was about to elaborate on that, but I'm just going to let it go because it's HIC Talk Radio. We have a lot to talk about. I'm Dan Calachico, Dan Law 83, Craig Lagans at Craig Lagans. He'll spell it out for you later, and I'll spell it out for you later. We're going to get right into it. First things first. Um, not CM Punk. That's last things last. Uh, I went to a, a, a little bit, I went to AEW Full Gear uh, in Balt- at the Baltimore Arena, Royal Farms Arena. Not one bucket of fried chicken, no gasoline found anywhere. Very upset about that. But uh, I did say this on the Stadium Journey podcast. I'm going to elaborate. They, please just replace or burn that building down. It's terrible. Uh, <laughs> It's just all this wrestling history in that building for NWA, WCW especially. It's just it's, it's such a crap hole. <laughs> I hate that place so much. Like it, fat or thin, those those uh, concourses are just an uh, uh, an accident waiting to happen. It's amazing that place is still there. I mean, where else you know put an arena there? But uh, overall, I wanted to say this. Um, it was a good show. Was it the best show ever? Was it groundbreaking? It wasn't terrible either. It was a good wrestling show. I had a good time. Um, the main event was not for everybody, and it probably went. I'll even admit this because we're going to get into hardcore wrestling a little bit later. Um, hardcore wrestling doesn't bother me, but I understand it's not everybody's cup of tea. I know you you're not like killing people to go watch hardcore wrestling. It's just not something you like. Uh, but I will say this, and with most hardcore matches. Probably went 10 minutes, 15 too long. There's a couple spots. This is just my opinion. I am not a professional. I don't mean it in a disrespectful way because I loved the match. But I can see in a show where, uh, I will say this, a show that had something for everybody. It was one of the first shows in a while that was varied. Every match was a little different. Uh, different styles. AEW has been good with that. Well, you'll get a indie match where it's fast paced. You'll get an old time slower match. You'll get the ladies matches. You'll get a, a ladies tag team, a men's tag team. You'll get a, a hardcore match thrown in. But this one took it way to the old extreme. And I, I saw a lot of people, and this is probably true, the match that Dean Ambrose wanted to have with Brock Lesnar, John Moxley had with uh, Kenny Omega and it was it was good just a little too long but other than that that was a great show MJF we said it on the show before Craig if he didn't leave that show kicking uh Cody in the nuts which is literally what happened <laughs> I was gonna be upset he did just that um women had good matches it was something for everybody uh I will s- say this I do encourage those I'm not going to elaborate on anything because I don't care uh, in that way. Um, You don't need to announce that you don't like a match and you're getting up to go to the bathroom. Uh, Show some respect. Wonderful. You didn't like uh, the ladies wrestling. Okay, fine. Not for you. It's for somebody else. With all the other stuff stuffed on that card, that match wasn't for you. Just go. You don't have to tell the world that you're going potty. (laughs) Nobody cares, uh, especially uh, me. And I know nobody cares about that. So I'm not even know re- really why I said that. I'm a nobody. But my point is, is show some respect. You paid to watch these people. Perhaps shut up. It's just my two cents. I enjoyed the show. I will continue watching AEW. Uh, I like. Did you see any of Full Gear yet? Just the highlights at all? Anything, Craig? I just saw the I highlights. Saw the highlights. Uh, yeah. Uh, I saw the full matches, the matches I wanted to say. I saw um, the uh, the Omega, uh, Jericho stuff. Uh, I it's like there's it reminded me like of an old I don't want to say an ECW card because I enjoyed everything on ECW card. This card was more like um, match uh, matches I didn't want to see or matches that went way too long. And then a match I really did want to see, and then another match that went way too long, or I didn't want to see. It was like, it's almost like a Stewie, Stewie Griffin sandwich. It's like I know there's good stuff in there somewhere, 
but he had to get through the uh, the the other stuff. I don't like the idea uh, um, them wrestling through breaks or their their um, their 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 main event people should be in those spots instead of uh, you know the the people that they have out there. And um, I don't know why uh, Pac. I mean, why Pac isn't higher up on the card? Um, I don't know why MJF hasn't delivered a single promo on the show since he's the best heel in all of wrestling and outside of maybe the best company. Uh, obviously, we all saw it coming or were waiting for it to come. The MJF, because uh, he's a heel everyone else, but you know, obviously we saw this coming. I just didn't know why it uh he couldn't have gotten a uh a spot uh or even just like a i i won't even hesitate to say a piper's pit but just like a one minute spot with like certain people during the leading up to uh last uh the last card um but overall it was it was a good show i give it a b they're trying hard i hate to say that about any wrestling company they're trying hard they're 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 doing their best I'll, I'll give him an attaboy. Hey, man. Uh, valid. Va- that's a valid yeah. point. I, like, it's just not for everybody. And this is where I hope uh, it starts to cut in where others are doing something different. Like, I hope it starts that. I don't want to say trickle down because trickle down never works. You know that. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> you know what I mean? Where they'll see know. this on the other show and go, I need to do this. If we don't do this. You know, like the old Monday Night Wars. It's 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 a cliche of a cliche at this point. But um, I will say this: uh, being there didn't seem like it was too long. Anyway, Good. I mean, well, that's that's a glowing recommendation for someone who's actually there. I mean, I had the luxury of I can get up and go to the bathroom or pause it or whatever. The people that are actually there, uh, if it's not entertaining, then then you know it's up. Yeah. Yeah. But really. That, the, yeah. Only, the only. Uh, problem i saw was that ladies match everybody else it was 90 percent. everybody was really into it and it's a baltimore crowd that's it's a good wrestling yeah. crowd there because of the history that has been there before so yeah it was uh we'll see i, I don't know if i'm going to go to another one but I, i'm going to stay keep watching for now good um so uh i <sighs> I did not know Matt Travis. Um, I knew of him and I saw his work and he was a guy that trained through uh, house of glory and was wrestling at game changer and other places uh, in the Northeast. Uh, and I know a lot of people who did know and love this guy. So I feel that I should mention that. Unfortunately that Matt Travis has passed away. He became the 28th cyclist killed this year on the streets being hit by a vehicle of unfortunately it looks like it was a hit and run it doesn't look like it was a hit and run uh by a a dump truck driver early saturday morning and the tributes have been pouring in but i do want to send my condolences to the number of people i know that were affected by this who knew this person uh when my friend howie died Suddenly, it was a guy who just gotten clean uh, from a lot of uh, substance abuse, uh, was going through the fire academy, uh, just graduated fire academy, and was making a run at being a firefighter. Uh, Went to a party one night and didn't wake up. And one of the things, and it still strikes me to this day, is our friend Dean, Dean Dixon, the Dean of Credibility, uh, said to me, he doesn't, he didn't know this person, but from what I can see from other people, this, he looked like he was a man who was loved and respected by a lot. And I get that from Matt. Cause I did not know Matt outside of sh- seeing his matches. I never got a chance to meet the guy, but to say he was beloved and he's going to be missed is an understatement. So I wanted to send my condolences out to everybody that I know who are in pain right now because it was tragic it it literally happened saturday and tributes are still pouring in i know um my god and i'm i'm gonna forget there is a company running specifically this weekend who will have a 10 bell salute there will be many 10 bell salutes 
uh, to Matt Travis this next week of uh, wrestling show, especially in the Northeast. Now, that being said, speaking of the Northeast, I was trying to get Matt Tremont on, but I'm having, like I said, lots of lots of technical difficulties, and uh, I'm going to get him on uh, later as a makeup. Make, uh, 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 makeup's not the word. I don't know what the word I was looking for. Makeup will be fine. I'm just full of great words today. I, I'm tired. Make, make, I make good. Make good. That's it. I Thank know. you. Jesus good. Christ. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. Yeah. <laughs> make Ma- good. May. May. Make it. Make it. <laughs> make it. I'm, I'm, <laughs> catty shit. I'm a veg, Danny. May. Make. Make, make it. May. Make it. Make it. I'm a and I'm a veg, Danny. It's just he just when he pats him on the shoulder. Here, give me that. <laughs> that fit perfectly because my name is in fact Danny. I bet you didn't know that. Yeah, I did not know that. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, I make good. I will try to get him on soon because uh, Hardcore Hustle Organization is um, debuting on the Fight TV app this weekend. Uh, November 16th, 8 p.m. for twelve ninety nine. Matt Tremont's and Danny Havoc's Deathmatch Extravaganza number two. We were talking about hardcore shows. This might not be for you, Craig, but I do know there are rabid fans that won't be able to get to the show there and not be able to watch it at home. Uh, Alice Colon versus Clint Margera. Devin Moore versus Lucky 13. Matt Tremont versus Cody Rice. Cody Rice, if nobody knows who Cody Rice is, I follow him on Twitter now. You got to give him a follow. Look his stuff up. He's great. The Lone Rangers versus Louis Ramos and Casanova Valentine. I cannot read this because my eyes are <laughs> Drew Blood versus Steve Sanders versus Danny Gallagher versus Jimmy Lloyd versus Eddie Only versus I cannot read that. I have no idea who that is. Raven Havoc. Thank you. Connor Claxton versus Marcus Crane. That's going to be amazing. Marcus Crane and Connor Claxton is going to be insane. And last but not least, Chuck Payne versus Schlack. It is a who's who of hardcore wrestling in the Northeast, and they're all going to be on one show right now, uh, Saturday at 8 p.m. And it's only $12.99. That's a hell of a price for And, you know, tickets to go there are not that expensive either. So you should go if you can hear the sound of my voice, go to that show or order it on the Fight TV app. I've already ordered it. It's done. I'm going to be watching on my phone because I'll be at a show which is sold out, which is why I'm not promoting it. Primetime Pro Wrestling It's also November 16th. I'll be there letting y'all in the door, but it doesn't matter because we're sold out. But if you give me 20 bucks, maybe I'll let you in the door. Cash. I'm prepared for these kind of things. You never know. Just come to the... Ask me. Ask me. That's my name. Hey, Dan, you got 20 bucks. I'll be like, okay. Um, to the big news, I, I, I say big news, but that's huge news about Hardcore Hustle on uh, the Fight TV app this weekend. But this is kind of global news because WWE Backstage debuted last week, maybe the week before. So they're on their second or third week. And right at the end of the show... Well, actually, uh, since uh, I've been talking all episode and I haven't really given you a huge opportunity or you, there hasn't been an opportunity for you, why don't you explain what happened on WWE Backstage before I get into it? And uh, you take it over from here. Well, thank you, Dan. I wish I could explain what happened on WWE Backstage because from what I understand, no one was watching. <laughs> that actually had woken... Uh, from what happened on WWE backstage. Now, I just want to clarify that WWE has so many with an original contact on their network, and they do such a great job of advertising it on all their shows. You know, during SmackDown, during Raw, during NXT, it's watch WWE after this particular show, this table for three, and watch, and it's on the road, or it's for seven, or something, or WWE backstage in this in this particular case, which I missed. Uh, this is only a second or third week on the air, uh, yeah. but I was woken up this morning because social media was all a buzz about what happened at the end of the show. Now I barely know that on the show was Renee Young, Ambrose's and slash wife, but she's flanked by Booker T, the injured Samoa Joe, the injured Paige, and the current WWE NXT Heavyweight Champion Adam Cole baby, and. Renee said something about, because um, I, I, it was a 50-second clip 
that's been shown the world over millions of times by now. Remember how she set it up. It's something about we want the show to be different and there's going to be a uh, we're going to shake things up. And and it's quiet. And then the opening strains of Cult of Personality comes on and out the backstage door in comes Phil Brooks, a.k.a. CM Punk. I'm in more than five years. CM Punk is on a WWE show. And walking right up to the camera, and obviously everyone except Renee Renee Young was surprised by this. No one saw this coming because even the lighting man had it shown horribly because CM Punk walked onto the set to the camera in total darkness and and, uh, paraphrased the great Roddy Piper by saying, just when you think they've Yes, when they have all the answers, I change the culture. I'll see you next week. And so now we have CM Punk on a WWE show. And as already said, he'll be back next week. What does this mean for the future of the WWE? What does this mean for CM Punk being back in the WWE? And it's going to be on backstage. Is he going to be in the ring at all? Is he just going to be commentating? Is will he have what I hope will be his own segment week after week? We don't know. All we do know, Dan, <laughs> is that the entire professional wrestling was turned upside down and that I mean, every wrestling company has been chanting for the last five years, CM Punk. Well, CM Punk is back. Yeah. And that's one of the funniest things I saw after this happened was is, uh, everybody was not everybody. I, I, I got to stop using that phrase. It's not everybody. It's people on Twitter and Twitter. That's not everybody. It's not a thing. I, I had not I had an epiphany the other day that um, some people just don't agree. <laughs> I had an epiphany the other day that, you know, if, if most of us deleted Twitter, that, uh, our personal lives would just go on. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I got to stop using everybody. And they all said it's not the case. I saw a lot of people saying that CM Punk sold out. Oh, yes, sell out. You go back to the. It's mostly the same people that have been chanting CM Punk for the last <laughs> six or seven years, however long it has been. <laughs> and I think that's hilarious. Uh, you know, you, you wanted him. Now you got him. Now here's the deal. Um, I will think it's funny if, you know, they go to CM Punk. What did you think, CM Punk? I don't know. I didn't watch it. <laughs> That's the first thing that happens. I guess he's got to watch the TV again. It's going to be very interesting because if I'm to understand this correctly, he is signed to a Fox contract, not a WWE contract. So if that is true, okay, I, cannot com- I cannot confirm that. I don't know because I there's so many websites and blogs and Twitter accounts and uh, some that are official, some aren't that report the same thing that the other one and vice versa, that I'm not sure what I'm hearing. And then you hear certain things from other people that have heard this, that I'm not really sure what the deal is, but if I'm to understand this correctly, he signed to Fox, which is fine because that means he could still wrestle on SmackDown. Maybe I don't know. (laughs) However, it's going to be very interesting because we know how outspoken that he is that uh, if he watches today's product, he's going to be very honest about it. And if kayfabe is a thing that's not on WWE backstage, I'm very interested to see how this goes. Maybe this is a way the show gets better because they'll listen to CM Punk or somebody will see the things that CM Punk is saying and go, huh, maybe. Um, I don't care how much your pet money you give him. I don't see CM Punk towing the company line just because there's a difference. Uh, and to, I, I do want to point out, um, I saw a lot of people other than calling him a sell out saying he's bitter and all this, the WWE kind of tried to ruin his life for the last five years. Not kind of, they did, uh, with the legal battle and all the things they did to him contract wise and health wise. It's very hard to, even if you're a skeptic of CM Punk, in my opinion, even after all that's happened between him and uh, my another favorite person, Colt Cabana, I love that guy. Um, did you hear the sarcasm? Yeah. 
a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's still hard after all that to see all that has happened with the WWE and the trial and the story he told. He's a lot of things. A liar is not one of them. So it's hard for me to be sympathetic towards the WWE in that instance, because you and I know uh, a lot of people know. And, you know, we've covered things in this story and before. There's some shady, some shady. I say that tongue in cheek. There's some shady stuff that they've done in the past. So I don't deny anything. Not 100 percent. There's not one percentage of CM Punk side of the story that I do not believe. It's just where I landed in this. Um, So I don't know what the deal was. I don't know what they gave him. I don't know what they decided or how they settled with the court thing. Uh, Frankly, I don't care. I'll say this unapologetically. I like CM Punk. I still like CM Punk. I don't care that he tried an MMA career. He's done more in MMA than a lot of people would have, sitting on the internet would ever try, let alone get into two matches and lose. Most of you can't even train that much to even get close to the shape he was in to even be in an MMA ring, myself included. I would never judge him in that way. He's been a world champion multiple times. He's been at wrestling. He's done all these things. I still like CM Punk. I never had a problem with CM Punk. Wrestling is a bitter, disgusting business sometimes. I live it in and out. I've been on the fringe. I've been in the middle of it. It gets old after a while, and sometimes you're just like, eh, I'll go back to work. Never say never in wrestling. The day he announced that he was going to leave the WWE, and he said, I'm never going back to wrestling, I knew Eventually, he would. Money notwithstanding. The man saved his money. He doesn't really have to work again if he doesn't want to, for or for a very long time. He was still a guy who liked wrestling, and maybe he wanted to go back or get near it somehow. Maybe this is to dip his toe in the water to see if he'll ever go to the WWE contractually if he isn't, because I don't know. I didn't bother to look past a few accounts to find out what was true and what wasn't. Um. It is going to be good to see him on TV again. I say that unapologetically. I, I am a CM Punk mark. I'm very happy that that was uh, the way they went with that. I hope he patches things up. Quite frankly, I hope they all patch things up and he does work again. Because that is a person in ring and out of ring that is sorely missed on these shows today. And nobody can deny that. We've, we've talked about it till we're blue in the face on this show. Between the gaudy promos to the... Uh, unbalanced matches on the shows to just the out of the end of hell in a cell to just name a few things. And then the make good, that's the word I was using earlier to give Bray Wyatt the championship later. There's just something missing. And I feel he could be a good catalyst to turn things around. Not that there's nobody in the company that couldn't, that's the way we're going with it. I'm very happy about this. And, and, and quite frankly, if he's on the show, I didn't watch one episode of WWE backstage before this, and now I'm more inclined to watch it. Now that I've gone on again, Craig, do what do you agree with what I said? What do you disagree with? How do you feel in general about CM Punk being even near WWE TV again? I'm going to bring Martino at heart. Hulk Hogan, Jim Cornette. These are people that I've said out loud in print on this podcast that I thought would never be in the WWE in any way, shape, or form ever again. I was wrong all those times. And I added CM Punk to that list of people that I thought I would never see on the WWE program. And my love to be wrong about this, and I'm so glad that I am, that CM Punk is back for the time being WWE. And that music again, seeing him walk through the backstage... My only selfish wish was that it was at a pay-per-view event, maybe at this week's Survivor Series. could still be at this week's Survivor Series, but to have his return be on a major uh, set at a major show would have been ideal. But having him back is is ideal, too. I agree with everything you said, Dan. The wrestling business is a very cutthroat, narcissistic, egocentric, ego-driven business. Things that could happen, and also one of the best things that could happen to anyone's career. Uh, so, you know, uh, what Punk went through, what a lot of wrestlers have gone through after they left the company, is, it has been nothing short of nightmarish. But 
he's back. <laughs> like those other names that I mentioned, I thought would never be back. Here he is. <laughs> so if for wrestling fans, it's a it's a day to rejoice. Um, and we'll see how long it lasts. But just the fact that he is back is just a statement in itself. I'm very happy about it. I, uh, it, it, like I said, I, I'm work in, um, I'm more curious to see what his takes are about the product that he's going to be having to watch now. <laughs> That's yeah. Uh, I, like I said, I'm excited. I wouldn't have watched it before this time, Craig, but I'm certainly going to watch now. You know what, Dan, there are so many WWE original shows on. I just got backstage confused with some of all the other shows that they have on with the panel. If anything, I'm more excited the fact that CM Punk and Samoa Joe could be on the same panel together. Um, those guys go way back, you know, Ring of Honor and uh, other wrestling organizations, primarily here in the Northeast. But seeing those two back together again, awesome. Absolutely awesome. Um, well, with that being said, as long as, uh, everything works tonight, why don't we try to start wrestling a story and see how far we get children gather around the Snapchat because they're going to go back to the way back machine back when the universe were called actual fans where belts were called or not called titles and when sports entertainment was professional. We start out November 7th, 1985, one of the most important dates in professional wrestling history because on this date, November 7th, 1985, was the first ever pay-per-view in professional wrestling history. Six months and closed circuit television, the WWF put on the WWF Wrestling Classic at the Rosemont Horizon um, outside of Chicago. It was the first pay-per-view. I didn't even know what that was. No one knew what it was. <laughs> but it was a one-night tournament, and it showcased most of the WWF's active roster. Uh, the tournament was won by Junkyard Dog, and it must have been one of those nights where Junkyard Dog really wasn't feeling it. Junkyard Dog, as we've said on this podcast many times, is known as a partier, wasn't always in the best shape. And uh, his matches uh, reflected that. To get to the finals, he beat uh, Moondog Spot, I'm sorry, uh, the Iron Sheik in under two minutes, and then beat Moondog Spot in under a minute where there was no referee. They just started fighting before the match, before the referee even got to the ring. JYD headbutted Moondog Spot and pinned him by his own count, and he was declared the winner. Yeah. And in the finals uh, of the Wrestling Classic Tournament, he defeated Randy Savage by, by count out. By backdropping Savage over the top rope, Savage, who had wrestled three times that night, including one of the best matches of the night against Davy Boy Smith. Davy Boy Smith performed the first ever top rope superplex on Randy Savage, but it was Savage who grapevined Davy Boy's legs as he went over and pinned him. And the match Savage had before that match, Dan, mm -hmm. to get to the finals. Randy Savage defeated Ricky Steamboat <laughs> in the first ever pay-per-view match, Mania 3. But Randy Savage took on Ricky Steamboat in a tournament match at the first ever pay-per-view. But anyway, at the finals, Junkyard Dog was obviously blown up to death. And Randy Savage, even though he was counted out, was still fresh as a daisy. But Junkyard Dog won the first Uh, F Classic was uh, Hulk Hogan versus Roddy Piper in their first match since WrestleMania. Andorf and Cowboy Bob Orton. But that started everything. And the words PPV, the letters PPV, started on, this, on that date, November 7th, 1985, the first ever pay-per-view. Uh, staying on that date, November 7th, 2005, Midway Games released the first, last, and only TNA video game, Dan. Mm. Interesting. We were talking about that last week because uh, I was talking about getting virtual pro wrestling. And the reason why Samoa Joe and, and uh, AJ Styles were uh, consultants on that game was because they were aiming to make something as close to virtual pro wrestling, which they consider and I mean virtual pro wrestling too, the greatest wrestling game 
uh, ever. Uh, basically, uh, if you missed it last week, Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 was WrestleMania 2000 with All Japan, New Japan, Japanese wrestling stars, American wrestling legends, just to name a few. Uh, Great Muda, Jushin Thunder Liger, Scott Norton, Mike Awesome, uh, the Funk, Story Funk Jr., Terry Funk, uh, just just to name a few, scratching the surface on those names. Uh, and uh, the in, TNA game, it was okay. It's a good game. It didn't turn out the way they wanted to, but it's, uh, I will say the replay value is not great, but uh, I played it a couple times. I, I still have it. I, I actually have that in the PSP version, the PS3 and the PSP version, so... Yeah, and uh, this was TNA's uh, Maiden Voyage, their first ever uh, and only uh, video game. And that's kind of like a sign of the, a pro wrestling um, company that you've made it, uh, that you have your own video game. I mean, ECW had their own video game, and uh, now TNA had theirs. And uh, it was released November 7th, 2005. November 8th, 1970. 75 landmark date because uh, on this particular day, Nick Bockwinkel, a uh, multi-time AWA tag team champion uh, with uh, the late great Ray Stevens. Nick Bockwinkel would defeat Vern Gagne for the AWA heavyweight championship. Wow. Uh, this would be Bockwinkel's first ever AWA championship, his first world title. The AWA Championship, which, which would be synonymous with Nick Bockwinkel for the rest of his career. But uh, this particular win uh, was his first world title, and he would hold this belt for close to five years. Wow. Nick Bockwinkel, with this reign as AWA champion, he would be the longest champion in the 70s. In the 70s, no world champion held third title longer than Nick Bockwinkel. And uh, it started his legend wearing suits on the air, using huge words, talking down to uh, the folks, and having the greatest manager of all time at his side. The legend of Nick Bockwinkel started November 8th, 1975, with his first world title win, and uh, it's very historic. On that same day, uh, November 8th, 1980, right here in Philadelphia, uh, Bubba Ray Dudley's favorite tag team, Tony Gurria and Rick Martell, would defeat the Wild Samoans for the WWF Tag Team Championship. The Samoans would uh, regain the belt after losing them to Bob Backlund and, and uh, Pedro Morales at Shea Stadium would uh, regain them in a tournament, but would lose them for good to Tony Gurria and Rick Martel. And uh, on that same date, November 8th, 2005, at a SmackDown taping in Indianapolis, Indiana, Eddie Guerrero would defeat Mr. Kennedy <laughs> in his, the final match of his career. Gosh. November 8th, 2005. Uh, not to be outdone, uh, exactly two years later, on November 8th, 2007, CNN would have the uh, a special on professional wrestling called Death Grip. The Death Grip special that um, they used to, uh, on the heels of the death of Chris Benoit, uh, this was noted in uh, Chris Jericho's book. It seemed because of the tragedy, the national tra tragedy of, the, of Chris Benoit, professional wrestling obviously got a uh, bad name, and the Death Grip special, it seemed, would uh, try out every single professional wrestler they could think of. Um, most who had no affiliation or no association with Chris Benoit say that they were both professional wrestlers, but it was just a very, uh, some would say hatchet job, some would say very informative, but it was a, uh, a special on professional wrestling and the uh, pitfalls and uh, that we've come to know and love about the sport that we love. Um, some uh, Chris Canyon was interviewed, talked about his overdosing on sleeping pills. Uh, the Fort CM Punk was also on the sh show. Del Wilkes, the Patriot, uh, the ex-wife of Dynamite Kid, 
the actual Dynamite Kid. I remember his interview with a, a, a screw sticking out of his big toe. Uh, Chris Nowinski talked about how he wanted the uh, the brain of um, Chris uh, Chris Benoit after his death, uh, and of course mentioning uh, uh, Eddie Guerrero, who had two years earlier who uh, wrestled his final match. But um, <sighs> yeah, the yeah. Death Grip special was a uh, it was something to something to behold, and still fills some professional wrestlers with. Uh, Especially friends of Chris Benoit fills them with uh, just dread and uh, resentment. Do you remember that special, Dan? That was the one where they, uh, where someone goes after Nash and Nash kind of verbally takes them down. Or is that a different special? Oh no, that was that was Nancy. I Grace. think that's a different. Special. That's Nancy Grace tried going after Kevin and yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kevin was not having it, or vice versa. Who knows with Nancy Grace? I don't know. So to answer your question, no, I've yeah, actually not. Special. I've actually not seen yeah. Death Grip. Uh, I I just never. That was rough for wrestling fans, and of course, friends of the wrestlers and the wrestlers' family. And whenever they aired a special in those two years, I about that kind of thing, I just was like, I, I'm good. I I know. Yeah, just uh, it seemed like, uh, and Chris Jericho wrote about it in detail in his book. It's it uh, after the uh, the tragedy of Chris Benoit. It seems like every show, not just CNN, CNBC, uh, Nightline, were trying, were just grabbing every professional wrestler they could think of to talk about uh, the wrestling business or you know steroids or and people that had no had never even met Chris Benoit ever. Had to talk about his death, and it just seemed like, you know, imagine if uh, if an on-air radio personality in Davenport, Iowa, killed his uh, his wife and kid, and they talked to Preston and Steve about it. It's yeah. like, well, yeah, I guess. Right, uh, what does one have to do with the other? But uh, professional wrestling was all professional wrestling, and professional wrestlers were all painted with the same brush on this uh, particular CNN special called Death Grip. But uh, that aired November 8th, 2007. November 9th, 1956, Dan. We're going to go back, way back in the Wayback Machine. On this particular day, November 9th, 1956, the great Luthez would defeat Whipper Billy Watson for the NWA Heavyweight Championship. (laughs) Now, it may not seem that big a deal because Luthez would be winning the NWA title six more, six times. He was the first six time NWA Heavyweight Champion. But on this particular date, Dan, when Luthez defeated Whipper Billy Watson for the NWA Heavyweight Championship, that would make him to this day the last undisputed professional wrestling world heavyweight champion. The AWA would come into existence in 1960. Obviously, the oh, WWF okay. would uh, start in 1963. But when Luthez defeated Whipper Billy Watson and became the NWA champion and would hold that belt uh, for another five years, he would be the last undisputed world heavyweight champion in professional wrestling when there was only one. And the last man to do that was Luthez. Wow. Yep. And you see how many different federations we have now and so many different uh, television uh, outlets with their professional wrestling shows trying to, you know, each having their own world champions. Well, back in the day, there was only one governed by the largest body in professional wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance. And, uh, and Luthez was the last man to be the only World Heavyweight Champion. Also on this date, Dan, uh, November 9th, 1997, the Survivor Series was held in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Stop me if you've heard this one. (laughs) No, I won't. Okay, well, (laughs) here it was. uh, November 9th, 1997, Survivor Series, Montreal. The main event was the current then WWF heavyweight champion Bret Hart going up against Shawn Michaels and the ending of that match has been highly disputed 
Yeah, slightly. And what is it? slightly? But twenty-two years later, still the most famous wrestling bout of all time, the most famous ending of any wrestling bout ever uh, occurred. The Montreal screw job, as it's legendarily known now. But it occurred November 9th, 1997. Uh, since then, it's been talked about, I guess, uh, Dark Side of the Ring, uh, yeah. the uh, great series on Vice, was a little more in-depth. We got to hear from people that, that I hadn't heard, namely Bruce Pritchard, people that were actually there. Jim Cornette, you guys, you know, you come up with your own ending. If you don't want to just take this, take it off them. And, uh, you know, now we've... we. The fact that we have now, uh, Bret Hart had already signed a contract with the WCW and was just told to keep it uh, to himself, uh, but word leaked out. And when word leaked out, that's when uh, things got dicey. Yeah. And Vader, of all people, told uh, Bret before the match just to watch out, to watch himself. And Bret uh, convinced Vader that he was fine because he had his good friend Earl he and Earl Hebner close for him. Well... Now Craig, all things ended, Craig, it, but um, it all started November 9th, 1997. All right. Well, with that being said, next week we're going to do a whole um, wrestling historian episode. I'm going to try to make, do a make good with Matt Tremont as well, because not only am I having technical difficulties, we just discovered through troubleshooting that you're also having technical difficulties that I'm not going to get into on the air, but let's just say somebody's getting a phone call. Uh, but I do. I do want to say the funny thing is uh, to add to that technical difficulty and all the trouble we're having here. I uh, I mentioned earlier in the show a little while ago that Virtual Pro Wrestling Two I ordered. I got it in. I uh, you know th there's the trick. The only thing you have to do is take off the back of a Japanese cartridge and put on the back of an American cartridge to play it in an N64 NTSC. And as soon as I turn my um, N64, it doesn't work. <laughs> So it's like, God damn it! No! I can't just replace that! So that's the kind of day we're having. So we're going to call it short, keep it under an hour. We're going to have basically, um, that would be episode four of Wrestling Historian Deluxe next week. So Craig, before I lose you again and before the world ends, where can the people follow you, sir? It's my updated modem. Um, at, at Craig Legans, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Twitter, C R A I G L I G G E O N S. Oh, man. And also, Comic Book Gurus on WMMR.com, the WMMR podcast. Uh, please listen to that, too. You follow me on Twitter at DanLaw83. The HIAC Talk Radio is on all social media platforms at HIAC Talk Radio. And we're currently housed at the VOC Nation Radio Network. Type that into iTunes for the podcast or go to thebradyhicks.com to listen to this show, Stadium Journey, and Obey the Puck. For Craig Lagans, kind of, and for kind of me, we're getting the hell out of here. Goodbye. Goodbye.